I don't I don't fly drones or RC planes, no. I have one, so I think I flew a drone one time. So I, I used to a tiny bit, but I'm not back in the day when drones didn't fly themselves, I wasn't that good at it. It took a lot of skill. Now it doesn't really Well, that's when you need to get into FPV drones. Mm, that's the yeah. way to go if you <laughs> want a bit more challenge. Yeah, definitely. I got started on Nautilus because I happen to know the ROV operations manager. I'd worked with him on another ROV system, and I was in the right place at the right time. He needed another set of hands, and the ship was docked for the winter about a 10-minute drive from my house. So I started helping out and kind of never left. You, you're an inspiration to us all. Apparently, you have a lot of fans. I'm <laughs> just going through the chat here. Um, does anyone know how Herc measures the current flow and direction? You mean subsea? Sure. Use use words that I don't understand. That's fine. I mean under the <laughs> like underwater. Oh, oh, not, sub no, subsea, not surface. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> uh by feel, mainly. It's kind of drive and see what it feels like and then give a completely uh, qualitative answer when people ask how currenty it is. We are going to start doing watch change in just a bit, top of the hour. Um, so we might be a little quiet for a moment. But we'll be right back with you. This is the first dive of the Lu'uaiahikike Ulunakai uh, expedition. And we are probably going to be done with our descent soon, but probably not before a uh, shift change here.
Thanks. Yeah. Hello, back row. Hello. They might still be Whoa. setting up, but we are uh, we're getting set up here on SPL. Hundred meters on the sub bottom. Roger. Hundred meters, Roger. I'm gonna dial it in a Those bit. Those are some real returns there. Nice. Yeah. Again, that'll be all TVG'd out. So. And looks like you're dragging a bit forward, so you'll get probably dragged back a little bit as we settle. Roger. And we're going to go kind of along this heading of Herc, right? To go up slope? Is that the. Generally. Okay. Let's see what we got. Roger that. That's waypoint two. Um, it looks like actually more like 315. Okay. Yeah, 325 will be the heading. Roger, thanks, Rennie. Yeah. Uh, I, can't, I can't do it. <laughs> All right, 75 meters. Yep, roger that. It's doing a hard stop at five zero meters, sir. Jake. Yep. There we go. Oh, thank you, Renny. And I'll fix it once we get down there and see some stuff. Seize our sanity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like that seems much better. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Okay, I'll, I'll dial it as we go. Roger, thank you. All right. All right. I'll stop. Roger that. Five Let's zero check. meters. Roger. Roger. Works 30 meters off that tracks. Yeah. All right, Jake. I'm going to back up and then I'll have you face me since so we're going to be going around 315. 315? Yeah. 325. Yeah, 325. Sorry about that. No, it doesn't matter. 10 degree. <laughs> Three something something. <laughs> I got three beams on Doppler. Three beams, Doppler, Roger. I'll let you know and you'll be able to turn there, Jake. All right. Let me dial this in a little bit. Good evening, everyone. We just had a watch change. And whenever it's convenient for everyone, we'll have everyone go around and introduce themselves. My name is Lisa. I am Science Communication Fellow, joining the, the Corps of Exploration for the first time from Lawrence, Kansas. Excited to be here exploring the ocean. Lisa, we'll be joining you in just a second. We just, uh, we're just just getting bottom um, in all of our sensors here, so we're starting to set up and get prepared for uh, bottom time and, and the rest of the dive. So it'll just be a little bit of operations uh, chatter in the meantime for the front row.
Oops, sorry, right there. What was that? Okay. Roger. Dave, in, in video, I'm uh, experimenting with the uh, Mini Zeus. It's the first time I've used it. Uh, just trying right. to see what kind of a picture we get out of it. So if you see it kind of going up and down, that's me. Uh, Roger that, Dave. No, no problems. Okay. Had a great comment from a viewer. Did you think anyone? Did you think someone from Kansas would be out in the middle of the ocean? No, this is truly a dream come true for me. I'm so excited to share it with all of you and with my students, who many of them have never even seen the ocean before. Jake, with the moment, with the moment, you want to arrange it on the sub bottom there, please. Thank you. Are you still backing up or descending or both? Oh no, we're descending now. Descending, Roger. Yeah, twenty-two. Uh. <laughs> twenty-two, copy. Um, you've had four beams pretty steady, so I can switch you over. Roger. I'll just do a quick one on the fly. Okay, thanks, Ernie. Got bottom in sight. Bottom in sight. All right, you're on it right now. You're on Doppler. I'll do a better one when we're down there. Roger. Logging on bottom now. There it is. Yep. 610. Depth three, three eight. eight nine three. So we're on the uh, east flank of the seamount. It's pretty steep. And yeah, the slope's pretty steep in this area. Looks like uh, I think we're probably looking at volcanic clastics, so just broken up. Uh, Basalt. Oh, it does look like maybe it's intact lava, yeah. I might crank Argus gain just a tiny bit. The yeah, we want to get a... Uh, Something like yeah, that. We, we do want to get a sample. I don't know, we might have to poke at the ground a little bit. Argus may be coming back a little bit Roger. as you go, but we'll just keep an eye on it. Yeah, Roger that. All right, Dave, we're going to set up for a little bit of a white balanced, black balance there. Copy that whenever you're ready. Roger. I'm going to collect some USPL pings while we're here. Roger. And Dave, just for your information, we don't have any porch light for these dives, okay? Copy that.
have arrived on the ocean floor. Very exciting. Jess, I think you might get start to get yanked off. Roger. Still, Argus is still moving back. I could bump the ship alt alternately. But. I can come down a bit too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead and come down a little bit there on the yeah. delta, and I still will move off. All right, Dave. Is that too dark there? Uh, we got all of our lights on, do we? That's fine. I can uh, I can adapt. All right. Zooming in. Roger. Center it up just a little bit more if you can. It's all the way in. Okay, gone dark for black balance. Roger. Now. Roger. Balance. I'm going to reset your DVL while we're here. Out of auto XY. Roger. Balance is good. And come back out. Okay, white balance all done. Thank you very much. Roger. Hey, well, we have the manip out. Do you mind just kind of poking the ground in front of us a little bit? Yeah, sure thing. Um, we're going to get probably a little bit of a tug on us because you can kind of see Argus, but we can give it a scrape right now. Okay. Dave, you want to push on in there a bit? That's great. And yeah, it's pretty consolidated, this. So for the uh, manganese crust, we probably want to get a sample from... This location, since it's the deepest we're going to be. Roger. And, Pull wide, uh, please. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll get set up a bit under Argus, and then we can take a sample for you. Roger. As long as there's a sample to be taken. Ooh, foresh Ooh. foreshadowing. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, Jake, I'm going to come back over to you now. Yep. Come up a little bit. Thanks. <laughs> it might go back a little farther so you can just kind of like put a bunch in the bank. Roger. Unless we see a candidate. Yeah. I can always move the ship. For anyone just joining us, we have just reached our deepest depth for this dive and kind of getting yeah, situated. A lot of Fifteen tension spikes here. Yeah, Roger. Yeah. Mm. Lisa, I've been practicing the the name of the expedition. Oh, fantastic. I'm going to let you take the first stab at it. Luuaea ahiki i ke kuelono kai. That was beautiful. Thank you. Hopefully I didn't skip any of those. <laughs> All right.
right, Adam, we're in a better spot for sampling here. Great. So, <laughs> you know, I, I want you to go where you think you can pry something up. Some of that looks like, you know, it, it would break off. But in this instance, what we're really looking for is some of that uh, crusty rock. Okay. Um, does it have to be, do we have to break it off? Or can we take maybe those that are coming up into center screen now? Uh, oh, those little pieces up there. Uh, yeah. yeah, maybe if, if we take a look at them and uh, you know pick one up and spin it around, then uh, they can we get lasers on if they're not on. Yeah, yep. sure thing. Do you want a, a little bump in your direction? Uh, yeah, so we don't have to come back down on Argus there. Roger, that. I'll just go 15 meters. Okay, thanks. You. We had a question about what the maximum diving depth is for Hercules, and we are. Pushing those limits today. Maximum depth is 4,000 meters. And we are at 3,895 meters currently. Right. That'll take a while to feel, but. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Jake, you want to go to like 11 meters at the max? Yeah. Or if you find any behind you, but. So those lasers are 10 centimeters? Go ahead, Bridge. 10 centimeters, yeah. Uh, for now, that's it's OK. Any speed. Thank you. 0 0.4, thank you. Yeah, it might, be give you, it might give you some trouble. Yeah. OK, we'll try this real quick. Yeah. Looks like we're still backing up a bit. So Adam, yeah, we're just, um, as we settle out, Argus is kind of backing up towards the ship. So I put in a little bit of a move to compensate, but. Go ahead, Dave, and push on in there, please. That's great. That's great, thank you. So for those tuning in, uh, one of the objectives for this cruise is to sample the iron manganese crusts that form very slowly on these uh, hard surfaces in the deep ocean. All right, Dave, go ahead and push on in there a bit, please. How's this look to you there, Adam? Uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. Let me consult with uh, Coralie Rodriguez, who's standing right behind me. You want to push a bit more in there, J please, Dave? That's wonderful. Coralie is our guest scientist for this expedition. PhD research. Collecting rocks for her project. Yeah, I think that looks good. Okay. Yeah, that looks great. Just, uh, um, I can't quite get the size on that, but it, if you think it's going to fit in one of those smaller containers on the side basket, I think that's where uh, probably should go. Yeah, I think that'll be very manageable for us. Yep. All right, full wide there, please, Jake. Or Dave, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of us over here to your left. D and J. Here's the lasers on it if you wanted a screenshot of that. Oh, that's perfect. Adam. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. Got yeah, it. Yeah, sure thing. Going to follow me around there on the bubble, please? Yep. That's our first collection of this Thank you. expedition. Go ahead, Jake. And Adam, just for your reference, we've already seen about uh, spikes over 15, so we're keeping a good monitor on the tension, but um, just for you to be aware of, okay? Roger that. Uh, okay. We're heading upslope from here, so hopefully... Well, we need a corresponding NISCAN for every rock at the same location. Adam, whenever you get a chance, we had a viewer question about the difference in the coloration we're seeing on the ocean floor, with especially the lighter blotches. Yeah, so we're looking at... Uh, 
basaltic lava flows uh, that uh, make up this seamount, and then sitting on them uh, some pelagic sediment, and then it looked like there was some concentrations of coarser grain sediment in pockets All that right, uh, are a lighter color. Just to confirm, that was 001, NA135001. Correct. Yeah. Uh, we'd also like Good to... Uh, Papaniskan? Exactly. Yeah, you do. I don't even have to finish my sentence. <laughs> We're on the same brainwave right now here. Got a question from a viewer about what is a wet lab, and if you continue to watch the dive at the end of our dive, you'll see the recovery, and our scientists will be working to collect those specimens from Hercules and preserve them and get them ready. And so that's something you can watch after the retrieval of Hercules and Argus processing in the wet lab. You guys got eyes on it? Yep. Popped. Popped. That was Niskan 6, most forward. That was Niskan 6, correct. Thank you. So if I, folks might be interested in what the temperature is down here. And it's very cold. I'm trying to look for... And that was zero, zero, 002. Correct. So it's one and a half degrees Celsius down here. Adam, we have a viewer who would like to know how you are aging the rocks. That's what I was going to say. That's correct. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, dating these rocks is, is possible, but it's uh, pretty involved and, and difficult. Uh, one way to to know the age is to look at the composition of the rock and compare it to the ones around it that have already been dated. So in this area, we have a lot of volcanoes of Cretaceous age, 114 million years. Uh, and if it's similar to those in this composition, it's probably the same age. Um, but you can use uh, radiogenic isotopes, kind of like... Uh, uh, clocks for the rock and and for rocks of this age you'd use a method uh, called the argon argon method so uh, potassium in the rock decays to argon and by comparing the amounts of those two uh, isotopes you can uh, you can come up with the, the age that that the rock came turned from magma into into lava basically cooled which starts the clock uh, right. So it looks like, yeah, we're settled here. Um, I have on HIPAC 2, HIPAC survey, the screen, um, kind of where we are in relation to our first point uh, that we're heading to, waypoint 2. Mm -hmm. um, the bearing is roughly 325. It's about just over a kilometer away. Um, let me know what your objectives are. You, um, if we want to start to head towards that point or explore around here some more. No, I think we want to uh, head towards that point, and you can kind of see a bit of a ridge uh, coming south from waypoint two, and we just yeah. kind of want to uh, ease into that that ridge and go along its crest, where we think we're going to see perhaps greater concentrations of uh, biology. Okay, I'll start. Uh, we'll go three two zero. That'll be towards that. Um, we'll go at zero point two knots, so it'll be a bit of a slow start, but as we get up to speed will hopefully be like decent exploration. It looks like it's not too much walls and crags. It looks like a steep slope, but it's it's pretty flat as far as terrain goes. Okay, I'm gonna call Fantastic. that in. Fantastic. 320. Maybe as we get started up the slope, we can continue on with introductions. Sounds uh, good. I'm Adam Sewell. I'm, uh, Professor at University of Rhode Island and director of the Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute. Uh, my my research focuses on volcanism in the in the deep sea and how the volcanoes work, but also how uh, they drive hydrothermal circulation and the, the ecosystems that live on them. Really excited to be in this part of the ocean, looking at 
at uh, these volcanoes, which we think are pretty old, but uh, but kind of pop out of the seafloor uh, and create a little oasis uh, for life in, in the deep sea. Uh, let's see. That's about it for me. I'll provide some more more intel as time goes on. But uh, yeah, let's Sounds move around good. the room. Who'd like to go next? I'll go. Yeah. I'm Sarah Bremer. I'm a geoscientist from Madison, Wisconsin, and I'm sitting in the data logger chair. Jake, let me know when you start to see movement on Argus. I'm just trying to time to see how, yep. how, long, that. how long it takes. 628 is when we called it. Then. Yeah, that's correct. Anyone else available to introduce themselves, front row? Sure. Um, I'm in the Argus chair. Uh, my name is Jake Bonney, and uh, I'm a student at the University of Rhode Island um, uh, in the graduate program for ocean engineering. And uh, yeah. yeah. I'll hop on next. Sorry for the quietness there. Uh, my name is Jess, uh, Jess Sandoval. I'm sitting in Herc. Um, yeah, from California. All right. Hello, this is uh, Bob Ballard, and I'm the president of the Ocean Exploration Trust. And here I am. <laughs> this is Renato Kane. I'm the uh, of the navigation and mapping team on EV Nautilus. I'm Dave Robertson. I'm in the uh, video chair of this watch. I'm the senior video engineer on the, this expedition and uh, making the cameras uh, look good and uh, hope we see some interesting stuff. We're very excited to have Dr. Ballard joining us for this expedition. Is this the first leg you've been out on this year? No, uh, my third. Fantastic. And was it your 64th year on the sea? Uh, I went to sea in the uh, summer of 1959 on a script ship, not far from here. Uh, so, yeah, been at it a few years. <laughs> I think we're starting to feel a little bit of the move there. I had a question yeah. about what animals we possibly see sharks at this depth or will we just expect smaller invertebrates well i think you know we we're in this area because it's unexplored so uh we keep an open mind to what we might see but i think what we kind of expect to see are the types of animals that would attach themselves to the these uh, hard surfaces corals and sponges uh, as well as some of the animals that predate them. Um, I don't, I'm not sure that sharks are known to go to these these depths, but uh, we'll keep our eyes open for, for anything that comes up. Is there Who's back there? Maybe uh, I can go up and get it. Yeah, I'm struck by the absence of life altogether, whether it's uh, fixed or mobile. Yeah. I mean, nothing. 
and yet the oxygen levels are sufficient. So this will be interesting to see when we start seeing a any view, kind of life. A viewer would like to know what the currents are like at this depth. Well, are you look at the little, you know, you're, you're not much is the bottom Yeah, line. it's pretty pretty slow. But if you take a look at the little uh, kind of white bits that you see floating, um, most of them are, you know, moving relative to us, but they're they're still going pretty slow. So it's not like the currents are cooking along. Plus, when you look at the soft sediments, you're seeing no ripple marks. You're seeing no other than pure gravity. Uh, very little current. I'm a little surprised to see intact lava flows on on slopes these, this steep. I'm, I'm uh, you know, I think that somewhere on this seamount, you're going to see lava that's broken up as it as it's uh, kind of rolling down these these slopes. But right here, it looks like a pretty like, hard cap of lava over yeah, you know, like everything a we see. Massive sheet flow that flowed downhill. Yeah. A long time ago, we're estimating the age of 114 million thereabouts of Cretaceous. Yeah, that's right. So this has been around a while. Yeah. But it, do you see that lower left? Those are clearly sediments that have accumulated in a little pile. Yeah, if these are, are, are the age that we think they are, uh, 114 million years, it means they form some 3,000 miles away from here rode the ocean crust uh, over to where they they currently are sitting. All right, we'll move up slope and see if we can see any life. So it looks like um, Argus is just starting that swing there. So it looks like there's about a five minute delay for when we call on a ship move and when Argus starts to move. We'll just keep that in mind as we go. And uh, we're going at a pretty slow pace, which will be good. That way we can uh, stop and smell the roses as we go. And uh, maybe have time for a quick sample if it's something quick. Otherwise, we'll do the whole ship stop and back up situation. Well, we'll probably do a systematic sampling as we go up slope. Yeah, I think the expectation is to uh, collect kind of every 300 meters or so as we go up the slope. Roger that. Yeah, that's good gotcha. to know. We can try to anticipate that and stop on those on those depths. Could you zoom in on that uh, odd color, that orange brown? Uh, just to the, right to the, the lower right yeah. of the lasers. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, just to zoom in on that. When uh, you're always looking for anomalies. See, as we get look at the color we're picking up there. A little reddish. Yeah, like Look at that. Oxidation. That's almost staining. See that? Mm -hmm. Zoom in on that staining. Go ahead, Dave. Keep it all the way in. If you guys and, want, I can sit down. And get a focus on that. Hey, Dave, you want to come full wide for a minute? I'll set us down. That's staining. Full wide, please. Thank you. I'll get us to sit down so we have a bit tighter of a shot. There's no suggestion whatsoever that there's any volcanism mm -hmm. near the sky. But yet you're getting what looks like staining. Yeah, it could be, you know, some of these crusts are really iron rich. It yeah, could yeah, be a little bit of kind of rust. Rust, basically. <laughs> or All right, go ahead and push on in there full, please, Dave. Yeah, go right in on where that crack is and its color. Yeah, let's, let's look at that. Take a frame grab. Huh. I mean, it could be ancient, but. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. something we can kind of keep our eyes on as we as we move yeah. up because I see no. Are couple. you maxed out on your zoom? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you. All righty, proceed. There's these little uh, white bits. That's in probably there. yeah. That might be some organic guy, almost like a tiny. All right, full white there, 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 you see that white guy that you just zoomed mm -hmm. back from? Yeah, agreed. Yeah. So we had a viewer ask if that's who just joined us. Yes, Dr. Ballard is here with us on this watch. We're very excited to have him with us. All right, coming up, Jake. We're boldly going where no one has gone before mm -hmm. in America. This is American territory. We had a question about the function of Argus. Does it have a function other than providing a video feed of Hercules? 
Yeah, it basically decouples the wave motion. The Argus is directly connected to the ship. So when the ship goes up, Argus goes up. So it's sort of the dampening system. What we want to make sure is that Hercules doesn't think it's on a tether. So it's like walking a dog and you don't want to pull on its leash. So the tether management is the coordination between the navigator, Hercules operator, and Argus operator to make sure that Hercules never th thinks it's on a leash. So we think of it as walking a dog. Now that's interesting. What do we got here? Look at that, Adam. Oh yeah, some uh, Look at little that. squeeze out of yeah through the through the top of the flow. Yeah, this like a tamola. Yeah, yeah. You know, or it, uh, sort of. That's that's Is interesting. That? Oh, yeah, laser. And it's well coated. Yeah. You can see it's been, the deposits have smoothed everything. Yeah, have, yeah, taken the rough edges and smoothed them out. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, it's... It's like a broken pillow, but that has been glued yeah, back together with the... It's more of, a, a, of an extrusion through the whole flow. This is, yeah. I think the term's tamale, isn't it? Uh, it? Tumul tumuli? Tumuli, yes. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. It's sort of a mini little volcano, so to speak. Look at that breccia on the other top of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Could you zoom in on that little pile of rocks? Oh, okay, sure thing. Yeah, just, we never get enough of this. Yeah, zoom in on that. Go ahead and push on in there quick there, Dave, please. And I, that's sort of a Thank you. flow breccia. What do you think? That'd be an easy to sample. Yeah, but we, we've, yeah, we got we got to save our save our uh, sampling. I know. <laughs> I've collected thousands of rocks. And <laughs> almost finished that barbecue pit in my backyard. No, <laughs> oh, wait, please. Now that looks like something where an animal has crawled over the sediment. See that squirrely? Mm -hmm. Oh, like yeah. Like a sea. Uh, we anticipate sea this dive to last yeah, at least twenty-four hours, so we do have to grazing. Right. Make sure we don't collect too many samples. No, let's keep going. You know, we're, we've got a ways to go, don't we? See those little black dots? Did you want to zoom on that, Bob? Or yeah, like, right okay. where your lasers are. See what All that right. black dot we'll is. Get us some good light on it first. That's our, it looks organic, I, or is it a, just a hole? Uh, maybe it's just a hole. Go ahead and push on in there full. Yeah, it's, I think, a hole. Or is it? No, it's growth. What is? What do we got here? Uh, a little, little shadow. shadow. Yeah. All right, full light, please. The shadow nose. All right. All right. I'm going to get a little bit out of here. Keep going. Yeah. Yep. Scoot along. Coming up. Nice feature. Yeah, these are old, old surface. Looks like ancient pillows, huh? These are heavily coated, aren't they? Yeah. Oh. Those are ancient pillows. Yeah, look at that. Just totally smoothed over by position over time yeah thick crusts I'll bet yeah sometimes you see when on pillows form on these steep slopes they get real long and skinny kind of yeah. like tubes they lost all of their delicate structure the blagonite has gone and everything just been coated spray painted yeah, like thousands of coats of, of yeah, spray, paint spray paint as these manganese and, and iron slowly yep. deposit on the surface. Rare earths. Yep, this has been spray painted for 114 million years. <laughs> and the look down on uh, from Argus on Herc, you can see this little patch of pillows that we're in. Is that a dead sponge? 
Yeah, it looks like the bottom of a dead sponge there. Yeah, that. <coughs> What's up ahead? It looks like a hole. Yeah, what it looks like a boulder there? field up here. Is that a shadow? Yeah, it's a uh, the to bottom the of the right, pillow. just the shiny patch. Oh, the no, shiny the, patch. The black hole there. Oh yeah, look at that. That's Zoom fun. in on that. Uh, sorry, you guys want the bottom right? Yeah, right. Oh, no, it's just a shadow surface. Yeah. You want to do a partial zoom there, please, Dave? That's great. A little pink guy. Yeah. Looks like a shrimp. Look at that. Yeah. Our first. Is that a, a xenophyophore in there, too, or yeah. just a clump of sediment? Push on in a bit more, please. I don't know. Something's definitely moving. Huh? Little shrimp, isn't it? The other one looks like a golf ball. <laughs> yeah. huh. That's, that's It kind of seems like a... It's something on a stock where right? the white is oh. yeah i can't tell yeah. are you max zoom try to get that white guy i don't i don't think xenophyre forests have stalks but it could just be that there's a it's just stuck in that it's little it's kind of just in the rut playing uh -huh. pinball yeah right. but does it have fibers like a dandelion where it's holding on oh, i don't okay. see any fibers <laughs> but it would be curious that it's been stuck in here it's hard to believe yeah it's yeah. got to be anchored somehow yeah it's All really right. interesting oh, that that surface is so shiny. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and we saw white. that last exhibition as well. That there little was something uh, living over here to the left. Yeah, there's really dead ahead, white. right where the. Oh, we just yeah. passed it. We're going to have to zoom forward yeah. a bit. We're getting uh, behind yeah. here, so okay. we got to like catch up. No problem. We're going to do a little bit of catch up here, and then, Not a problem. And then we'll uh, just pass up that uh, yeah, ancient the, Roman ship. Yeah, if there's a UFO, we just have to blast past it. There's something there. We go. Stock guy. Uh, this is um, Bellello, right? This is a stock crinoid, I believe. Stock crinoid. It looks like it. Someone on it. sitting on it. You want to do a quick partial as we... Dave? That's great. So we can see what it is. A little brachiopod on it? Yeah. Yeah, something. Go wide, please. Very ancient flows. When you said 300 meters, you mean depth? Distance. Depth wise, yeah. We're, we started 38? We started right around 39, so. So, we ain't gone much. Can I come up there a little bit, Jake, please? Yep. So that ship moves complete. I'm inclined to just call in another one, but we'll just. You're about halfway through it. Roger. Yeah, go ahead. Lenny, I think that's a good idea to keep us moving keep up the slope. Keep cranking them in. Roger that, yeah. Yeah. Renee, do you have control of the uh, the nav screen? Sure, which one? Uh, the one that's zoomed in on the, uh, the one that's on your screen. Can we zoom it out a little bit? This one yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yep. High pack screen. High pack. So, yeah, up slope to the left, as you can see. That's great. Yeah, that's to our next waypoint, and then, uh, and then we're kind of following this ridge around. So the dive plan for this dive is to start at the deepest step of the seamount and work our way up a transect, seven and a half kilometers depth and distance.
This is the first exploration of this chain of seamounts. Only one of the seamounts actually has a name. The one that we're visiting today is just an unnamed seamount C. Looks like a face. Yeah. A grumpy face. Adam, would you say that these are multiple events where you have this bulbous, more pillow-like, and then the sheet over, or? Um, I think it, it could be that, but it also could be that the sheet flow, kind of some of the crust founders or breaks and allows some lava to squeeze out okay. in different spots. A lot of people would suggest that a seamount like this formed in kind of one or a series of continuous eruptions uh, over, you know, periods of, of decades or <clears throat> hundreds of years. But uh, we really haven't explored them enough to know whether, you know, if you sample a few spots on this, is it all the same stuff or, or has it changed a bit over time? Mm. The patches of them are like really linear, suggesting maybe a breaking Looks like through a, a fracture. Brisingid star. Yeah. Go ahead and push on in there a bit, please, Dave. We had a question about whether the ROVs are tethered, and these are tethered. That's great. Argus is actually tethered to Hercules. Hercules is showing us the video we're looking at right now. Argus.